This year is one of the lightest and thinnest gaming laptops currently in the market. You know, it's kind of crazy to me that we're still able to cram all this power in such a lightweight and thin device. So instead of giving you guys the long boring review of these laptops, I'm actually gonna show you what these can do in the real world. So after going over the specs and features, we're gonna jump into some real world scenarios with this laptop. So we're gonna be gaming on it, we're gonna be editing videos, and we're even gonna attempt to stream games just to see how well this laptop can handle all of that. So this is the MSI Stealth 15M gaming laptop and it's only 16 millimeters thin and weighs 3.75 pounds. It kind of feels like a notebook to be honest because of how light and thin it is. And it gets even better. We got the new Intel 11th Gen Core i7 11375H processor, which is said to be up to 20% faster than previous gen. This is a quad core eight thread CPU with a max turbo boost of five gigahertz. With these new Tiger Lake processors, these laptops are the only ones that also get PCI Gen 4 and Thunderbolt 4 support, which we'll talk more about later. We also have 32 gigabytes of RAM running at 3200 megahertz and the new NVIDIA RTX 3060 Max-Q graphics card, making this perfect for not only gaming, but also content creation as well. We have all of this packed inside a minimalistic, sleek aluminum chassis for both outside and the inside. I was surprised to find very little flex from the display compared to other thin laptops, and not much bowing from the keyboard deck either. The Stealth 15M comes with a 15 inch Full HD display and a 144Hz refresh rate, which is to be expected. If a gaming laptop has a refresh rate any lower than 144Hz in 2021 or beyond, then it shouldn't be called a gaming laptop in my opinion. The backlit keys are nicely spaced with the option to change the lights through the dragon center. However, all the lights are synced together. There is no option to individually customize each one. I wish the trackpad was slightly more to the left side as my right palm kind of sits on top of it, but it's not a big deal as the trackpad doesn't pick it up. In fact, it's very accurate in determining the difference between a palm and a finger. The port selection isn't something I'm too thrilled of on this laptop. I wish there was a full SD card slot on the left side instead of a micro, since I do record all of my footage on a full SD card. And I would have liked one more USB 3 port, since the only two ports get occupied really quickly, especially after plugging in my mouse and keyboard. So I'm forced to use a USB hub with this laptop. However, I do like the full-size HDMI port on the right side, which allows me to directly plug in a second monitor. And the two USB-C ports are also a nice plus. One of them is actually a Thunderbolt 4 port, which means faster transfer speeds and more power delivery compared to Thunderbolt 3. And you can even hook up an 8K monitor. That is absolutely nuts. All right, so let's get into some games real quick. Uh, let's start off with Cyberpunk 2077, something very demanding and taxing on the graphics card. We are, as you can see, we're barely hitting 50 FPS in medium settings, by the way. Actually, I guess it depends on what I'm looking at, but we're getting around 50 FPS, which obviously I'm not expecting triple digits on a laptop device running on a 3060 Max-Q, but for Cyberpunk, I would say this is definitely playable. Uh, Temps-wise, we are hitting a little over 70 degrees for the GPU. 74 degrees Celsius it looks like. I have the game running for about 30 minutes by the way, so we can see peak temps. Uh, the CPU is a little toasty. It looks like it is spiking up to 98. It just hit 98C. That is pretty damn hot actually. Uh, but the clock speed for the CPU is pretty stable. I'm gonna drive around a little bit just to see if we're gonna see some major frame drops. So as we get into the city, we are seeing some frame dips to the low 30s, which is to be expected. I mean, there's a lot of textures being loaded as we, uh, as we drive through the city. This is a beautiful game. So obviously if there's not much uh, going on on the screen, we are getting a little higher than 50 FPS, but once you get into like a busy intersection, the frames do dip quite a bit. Overall, I'm getting really smooth gameplay for the most part, even with these high temps. I'm not experiencing any frame lag whatsoever. Like the cooling on this laptop is keeping up. It does have two separate fans, one for the CPU and one for the graphics card with six heat pipes. So it's actually doing a pretty good job keeping up with the temps. All right, let's switch to some DLSS gameplay. So we'll put it on ray tracing medium and see, or not see, wow. Okay, five FPS, what is going on? 
Okay, I guess it took some time to load. So, okay, we pretty much cut the FPS nearly by half. So we're getting around 30 FPS, which is, I guess, dare I say, it's still playable. Assuming you guys are used to frames like this, of course, but for the elitist or enthusiasts out there that are kind of used to playing over 100 FPS, then this is probably not, uh, not ideal. The game does look a lot better, actually. More reflections, more details in the shadows. So I guess it just depends on your playstyle, really. I mean, yeah, it's not terrible. This is definitely playable. Another thing to keep in mind is the fan speed on this laptop, you guys. It is running some pretty beefy hardware, so expect to hear some, uh, some jet engine noises. I'm gonna stop talking for a bit so you guys can hear the max fan speed right now on the laptop. So obviously, if you're using earphones or headphones, then the fan speed will be pretty irrelevant to you. All right, guys, so now it's time to do a little bit of streaming. I have an external monitor hooked up on the side here just for OBS, and I am currently using the webcam on the top as my face cam, which is 720p currently, and I am gaming on the laptop. So whatever you guys are seeing right now, is exactly what the viewers would watch if I were to stream this on Twitch or uh, YouTube. I currently have the bitrate set to 6000 by the way, and the encoder is using the um, NVIDIA NVENC. Oh, damn it. I was going for that triple. So yeah, you guys can kind of be the judge and let me know how the quality is for the stream. And the temps are looking a lot better because obviously this is not a uh, demanding title like Cyberpunk. Okay, so for someone that wants to stream games like this, obviously on just a laptop, this is, this is definitely doable. You don't need an external monitor, by the way. You can stream with a single monitor. Oh my God, I just have to die there. That's two. Can I get three? Oh my god, dude. What? Someone's coming. That's three. Can I get four? Oh my god. That was so bad, but I still got it. And that will do it. Where am I in? Sixth place, not bad. All right, so let's do a little bit of editing now. As you guys can see, I kind of have an overkill setup. I hooked up a 49 inch super ultra wide monitor to the laptop. And I, the point of this is to kind of push the laptop and see, you know, how far I can go. I want to see the absolute limits on this tiny little device. So we're going to be editing some of the files that I actually shot uh, for this laptop. And we are actually playing around with 4K files shot in 25p. So it's going to start off with um, scrubbing. I want to see how the playback is going to be from the, uh, the preview window. Usually if the, um, if the specs can't keep up with the editing program, you will start to see stuttering and lagging from the preview window. So let's see if we can find some motion real quick. There we go. So there's some B-roll at the end over here. I'm going to start from the top here. Damn. Oh, okay, we have a little, little bit of stutter there. Not bad, considering we are on good quality, which is about, I would say, 75% of the full quality. So let's go ahead and do that again real quick. So the second time around, actually, there is no stutter or lag. So I'm guessing it just needed to buffer a little bit. So let's add a few transitions and effects, actually, between these. I got my go-to linear wipe transition that I like using. Let's put this in between. There we go. Okay, not bad. Okay, so there's a little bit of lag for the transition, as you guys can see. It is having some trouble loading 
It's supposed to look like this. So after it buffers a little bit, second and third time, it's very smooth, so not bad. For being a quad core processor, I'm actually impressed that it can keep up with 4K files. Let's go ahead and add some text. Usually the more text or transitions or color grading you add to any specific scene in the edit, it just becomes more taxing on your, um, on your PC. So let's go to add some specs real quick. 15.6 inch. 144 hertz. Let's align these. Do a little bit of an outline as well. And finally, let's add some color grading. I like to start off with some color curves. Let's add a bit of contrast. Yep, looking good. And finally, we will add a little bit of saturation. The color profile I'm shooting with right now is a little flat, so I like to add about two points of saturation on here. You guys can't really tell a huge difference, but if you look closely, like the reds do pop a little more. Here's a before and after, by the way. So yeah, I mean, it's not lagging. It's keeping up. Believe it or not, this is actually not any worse than the PC I'm using at home. Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, the fact that this laptop can handle 4K editing on a 49 inch external monitor is pretty damn impressive. So one of the cool things about the Stealth 15M is the Dragon Center. Through here, you can tweak the settings of the fan profiles and even overclock the graphics card, which is something I haven't seen on any other laptop. Most of the time, we just have basic settings to choose from, like quiet, balanced, and turbo. But here, you can go pretty in-depth if you want. So in order to change the fan curve on the CPU, we have to go into the Dragon Center, click on the user scenario, and then the user profile. Go into the advanced settings and then click on the settings button on the right side and in here we can set our very own fan curve and what's interesting is that you can even set the fan curve for the gpu fan as well given the size and weight of this laptop i was actually very impressed with what i can do i was able to edit 4k videos without any lag or stutter and i was even able to stream and multitask comfortably by having a 49 inch ultra wide monitor hooked up via hdmi now obviously I wasn't expecting to get triple digits with high settings for demanding titles like Cyberpunk with an RTX 3060, but for light competitive games, this laptop is awesome. I wouldn't play anything on here if it didn't take advantage of the 144Hz refresh rate, if I'm being honest. It would be a complete waste. I think the main takeaway here is that if you're a college student that wants to game on their free time, or if you're someone that is constantly on the move or traveling a lot, a laptop like this would be a great buy considering how small and light it is. Now, if you're someone who plays more demanding titles or if you enjoy playing with ray tracing or DLSS on, then it makes more sense going with a more beefier laptop, something with an RTX 3070 or even a 3080 if your budget permits. Um, sadly, this laptop just doesn't cut it. But with that said, this will be my current main travel laptop for work at least until something better comes along. But if you guys wanna check out the MSI Stealth 15M, I'll drop a link to it down below where you can pick one up. And if you guys wanna see more laptop videos, let me know by dropping a like before we head out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.